Hi, 7th graders. We are on lesson 2-2, comparing and ordering rational numbers. There's a few different ways that we can um, compare rational numbers. One is using a common denominator. So if you remember the word denominator, it's the bottom number of a fraction. Okay, so if we're comparing 5 eighths and 3 fourths, well, one way is that we can find a common denominator. I know that 3 fourths, or I know that 4 goes into 8, so I can change. So I'm going to rewrite this as a common denominator. So I can write 5 eighths, and then I know that if I multiply by 2 on the numerator and the denominator, then I will come out with 6 eighths. And then since we have the same denominator, different numerators, I compare the numerators and I can see that 6 is greater than 5. So 5 eighths is less than 6 eighths. Or 5 eighths is less than 3 fourths. Okay, so let's look at a couple more. So if we have 3 fourths and 7 twelfths, well, I know that 4 goes into 12, so I can multiply both the top and the bottom by 3. So I'm left with 9 twelfths and 7 twelfths. And I, so my sign would be greater than, so 9 twelfths is greater than 7 twelfths. Remember, the opening of our sign points to the greater number. So 3 fourths is greater than 7 twelfths. So if we convert it, we always want to go back to our original numbers and rewrite it. So I would rewrite it as 3 fourths is greater than 7 twelfths. 5 sixths and 7 eighths, well I know that they both can go into 24. So I can do 6 times 4, 5 times 4, and then I know that 8 times 3 is 24. So notice that I'm doing multiplying the same number for the numerator and the denominator, but I'm changing my number in order for me to get the same denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this as 20, 24, and we have 21, 24, so 20, 24 is less than 21, 24, or 5 sixths is less than 7 eighths. Okay, we have 1 and 4 ninths and 1 and 2 fifths. So I, I want to change this into an improper fraction. So I have 9 times 1 is 9 plus 4. So I'm going to rewrite it as 13 ninths. And then 5 times 1 is 5 plus 2, so 7 fifths. Well, I know that they both can go into 45. So I will multiply both of these by 5. Multiply both of these by 9. And I come up with 65 40 fifths and 63 40 fifths So I know that 65 is greater than 63, so 1 and 4 ninths is greater than 1 and 2 fifths. Okay, another way to compare is using decimals. So I have 8 ninths and 0 0.8. Okay, well I know that 8 ninths is 0 0.88888 or 0 0.8 repeating. Okay? Well, we already have 0 0.8 as a decimal. So when we're, when we're comparing rational numbers and one is a fraction and one is a decimal, we always want to make it so they're the same, either decimals or fractions. So I know that 8 ninths is 0 0.8 repeating. So since they both have 8 in the tenths place, I'm going to look at the hundredths place, and I can see in my hundredths place is an 8, and my hundredths place here is a 0. And since 8 is greater 
than zero, then eight ninths is going to be greater than zero point eight or eight tenths. Okay, we can also look at it as like this, eight ninths, and then we have zero point eight, which is eight tenths. Well, if I have eight, if I divide something into nine pieces and I have eight of it, I'm going to have more than if I divide something into ten pieces and I have eight of the pieces. So eight ninths is bigger than eight tenths. So if I have one third and 0 0.3, I know that one third from less than 2.1 when we're converting fractions to decimals, I know that one third is the same as 0 0.3 repeating, and then we have 0 0.3 or 3 tenths. So same as this up here, we have 0 0.33333 and then we have 0 0.30. Remember, we can add zeros and it doesn't change the value. So since there's a three in the hundredth place and a zero in the hundredth place, 0 0.3 repeating or one third is greater than 0 0.3. If I have 0 0.22 or 22 hundredths, oop, I forgot to put my little thing there. Um, I know that I can convert, well, 50 goes into 100. So if I times it by 2, then I can easily get a decimal. So 11 times 2 is 22. 50 times 2, we know, is 100. Well, we have 22 hundredths, which is also written as 0 0.22. So these are actually equal. And then if I have 2 and 5 twelfths, well, I know I have a two point something, five twelfths, if we think back to two one and how to convert a, a fraction to a decimal, five twelfths is written as four, or it'd be point four one six repeating, and the reason why I have a 2 here is because it's my 2, so 2.416 repeating, and then I have 2.42, okay, so if I look at my hundredths place, I have a 1, I'm trying to circle it, and that's a really bad circle, and I have a 2, well I know that 2 is greater than 1, so 2 and 5 twelfths is less than 2.42. Okay, if we're comparing negative rational numbers, so I have negative 2.4 and negative 2.45. Well, we have to think of it kind of opposite because negative numbers, we know, for instance, negative 10 is less than negative 9, even though 10 is greater than 9. But So negative, we have to always keep thinking which number is closer to 0. So negative 2.4, if we do it on our number line, negative 2.4 lays right here, which is the same as negative 2.40. And then we have negative 2.45, which is here. And if we think about it, if our line keeps going forever and ever over this way, 0 is this way. And then our positive numbers are more to the right um, of 0. So negative 2.40 is closer to 0 than negative 2.45. So that's going to be negative 2.4 is greater. Okay? And if you think of that with negative integers, the number closer to 0 is greater. If we have negative 7 eighths and negative 6 eighths, well, since the denominators are the same, we compare the numerators. And a side note, if you have a negative fraction, negative 7 eighths is the same as negative 7 over 8. So negative 6 eighths would be the same as negative 6 over 8. So we take our negative number and we can put it with our top number or with our numerator. Or we take our negative sign, sorry, and we place it with our numerator. 
So now, since we have the same denominators, I can compare negative 7 and negative 6. Well, I know that negative 6 is greater than negative 7, because negative 6 is closer to 0. So negative 7 eighths is less than negative 6 eighths. If we have, so we have a, um, a little word problem here. So Kelsey has different lengths of ribbon measuring 0 0.5 inches, 3 eighths inch, 5 sixteenths inch, 3 fourths inch, and 0 0.25 inches. Put the lengths of ribbon in order from least to greatest. So if we have some decimals, some fractions, okay, and we want to put them in order from least to greatest, we first want to decide, do I want to convert them to decimals or do I want to convert them to fractions? Well, I know, looking at eighths and sixteenths and fourths, I know that I can convert them easily to the same denominator, so I'm going to work with fractions. So 0 0.5 we know is one half. We know, and then we have three eighths, and then we have five sixteenths, and then we have three fourths, and then we have zero point two five, which is twenty five hundredths. 0 0.25 is one that we should just remember, but 25 hundredths, if we divide both sides by 25, 25 divided by 25 is 1, 100 divided by 25 is 4, so we have 1 fourth. So looking at this, I know that 2 can go into 16, 8 can go into 16, and both my 4s can go into 16. So now that I've converted them all to fractions, I'm going to find a common denominator between all of them. So 1 half, so I can multiply both my numerator and denominator by 8, because 2 times 8 equals 16. So 1 times 8 is 8, and 2 times 8 is 16. 8 sixteenths, we know that 8 is half of 16, so that makes sense that 1 half equals 8 sixteenths. 8 times 2 is 16, so 3 times 2 is 6, and then 8 times 2 is 16. Keep my 5 sixteenths. 4 times 4 is 16, 3 times 4 is 12, and then 4 times 4 again is 16, and 1 times 4 is 4. And now we're going to look at our numerators and we're going to put them in order. So if I have 4 sixteenths. And then I have 5 sixteenths. Trying to do this quick. And then we have 6 sixteenths. And then 8 sixteenths. And then 12 sixteenths. And then our last step, which I think is not on the page, it somehow got off the page, is to rewrite these as our original numbers in our word problem. Okay? So we know that um, we know that four sixteenths was our one fourth. Because see how I have them lined up right here? And 1 fourth we are given as 0 0.25. So I'm going to rewrite it as 0 0.25. And then we are given 5 sixteenths. I'm going to write it like that. 6 sixteenths goes with my 3 eighths. 8 sixteenths was my 1 half. And we are given it as 0 0.5. And then my 12 sixteenths goes with 3 fourths, which was told in the word problem was 3 fourths. So there's my order, 0 0.25, 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths, 0 0.5, and 3 fourths. And then that is all I have for you for today. So take your Naiku quiz. There's no new vocab words that you should um, have been filling out on your vocab sheet. 
but there are some review words on the vocab sheet that were mentioned in the um, lesson today, so if you want to take that time to fill that out, that would be great too.